Yeah, the state is averaging a whopping 1.9 billion attempts a day to intrude on uh, computer systems, and they're gearing up for even more. There's a lot of surveillance going on. There's a lot of uh, attempts to break into systems. And so with that number, you can only imagine how busy we must be to, to try and thwart all of that. This is the heart of the state's efforts to prevent cyber attacks on critical government systems. It sees a lot of attempts to break into government databases looking for vulnerabilities. Some nation states, I'm sure. Some people in their mom's basement. It could be just about anyone. I think the majority of the traffic is coming from a little more organized uh, than someone in their mom's basement. But um, you're seeing it traffic coming from all over the world. So what do they want? data. So they're just looking for data they could monetize. They're actually looking for ways to break into systems. You can well imagine the state has a lot of data on, on citizens. There's a lot of confidential data, social security numbers, addresses, things like that, driver's license numbers. We're very aware of the bad guys and we're very aware of the data we have and so that's our, our prior, priority is to protect that data. Utah doesn't seem like the kind of spot for hackers but our tech centers add to the potential for a target. A lot of times too I think they feel maybe government may be flat. So we have a great NSA data center here in the state of Utah. We have the Hill Air Force Base that has the, the number one fighter in the world. Maybe there's a way that they can uh, maybe vector, uh, maybe the feeling is maybe they can vector off if they were getting a foothold here that they could jump into one of these other systems. The state did have a major data breach in 2012 involving Medicaid and local governments have been vulnerable to ransomware where data is stolen and held hostage for a fee. So the state works to ensure there are no vulnerabilities and to detect surges in network traffic on state and local systems. Cyber attacks also follow elections and current events. Yeah, if you tweet real quick, we might even see it pop up. <laughs> Here in the state's cyber center, they also do a lot of social media monitoring. Like on election night, for instance, uh, there might be some misinformation campaigns on social media. So it is a, a, an opportunity to kind of get out in front of that. They partner with federal and local governments to try to protect all systems from attack. I can't say that we're... I'm completely comfortable all the time, but I think we're doing a great job with the resources we have. Um, we're doing some really amazing things. Uh, we're, we're really getting out in front of what I think we need to get out in front of. Now, something else that's interesting to note, when the COVID-19 pandemic first hit back in March and the state pivoted a lot of uh, workers to telecommuting, the Division of Technology Services was kept very busy. They noticed the number of attempted intrusions shot up to 3 billion a day from people looking for vulnerabilities. Bob, back to you.